Hello, welcome to another video on Arista Hardware. In this video, we'll be talking about Arista Hardware components. We'll be talking a bit more about ASICs, packet buffer memory, CPU, power supply, fans and airflow, line cards, optics and cabling, fabric, supervisors, and then we'll end by talking about management ports and USB ports. In the previous video, we compared and contrasted Merchant Silicon and Custom ASICs. We also uh, mentioned how Merchant Silicon ASICs is central to Arista's switching strategy. This slide shows you a broad cross-section of Merchant Silicon ASICs the ACs they use and the associated switches. So you can see from this slide they use Broadcom, um, Broadcom Jericho in the 7280 SRs, Broadcom Trident 2 in the 7300 and 7050QX, the Broadcom Arad in the 7500s, and the Barefoot Tofino in the 7170, Intel Fulcrum in the 7150, and then the Broadcom Tomahawk in the 7060X4. It's also important to mention for the sake of the exam that fixed form factor switches can have more than one ASIC. So it's not only chassis switches like 7300s and 7500s that can have multiple ASICs. The fixed form factor switches also can have more than one ASIC. Let's talk about packet buffer memory. If you're looking for a very simple definition, you can define packet buffer memory as where packets are stored when an outgoing switch interface is congested or busy. When an outgoing interface is then as valuable for packet transmission, the packets are sent from the buffer to the interface for transmission. There are two main um, ways to buffer packets. You can either buffer, um, queue the packets on ingress with the VOQ architecture, or you can use a TX-based um, queue management strategy. A good understanding of buffers relative to your application needs and your network environment is very essential to prevent uh, packet loss due to discards and you have discards in your interfaces when you run out of packet buffer memory for a particular interface. Packet buffer memory can be as little as 4 megabytes in a 7010T switch or as high as 144 gigabytes in a chassis switch like the 7500E. In this slide you see different kinds of Arista switches and a variation of um, packet buffer memory available. One I'd just like to mention here is the 7010, which is a 48-port copper um, switch with a couple of uplinks, and the 7048T, which is a very similar um, form factor with 48 copper ports and a couple of uplinks as well, fiber uplinks. You will notice the wide variation in uh, packet buffer memory available in the 7010 compared to the 7048 even though they kind of um, could almost serve as um, like-for-like -like replacements for each other. You also see um, the chassis switches, like I mentioned, with up to 144 gigabytes. So it's very important when you're choosing um, a switch for a particular application, a particular use case in your environment, you pay special attention to your traffic flows, um, where are your sources, where are your receivers, and then you make a right decision on the amount of packet buffer memory you will need from a switch. Arista generally use um, multi-core CPUs. So some devices will have dual core x86 CPUs, some will have quad core x86 CPUs, and some will have dual core i7 x86 CPUs. In terms of power supply, you can have AC or DC power supply in a 1 plus 1 redundant PSU configuration for most of the fixed form factor switches. These chassis switches can have 4 or 6, up to 4 or 6 PSUs. Here is what a PSU looks like for a 7300X um, chassis switch. And on the right hand side, you can see for a fixed form factor switch what the PSU looks like. And that's just showing you how the PSU can be replaced in a fixed form factor switch. Let's talk about fans and airflow. In the first video, you noticed I talked about when looking at sample questions, one of the questions was, can you tell me what the airflow of a switch is? Is it front to rear or rear to front when the color of the fan, the fan handles is blue? So this slide covers that.
So if fans have a red handle, this means the cold air is taken from the front and hot air is expelled at the rear. So that's why you have the fan having the red handle. So if the fans have a blue handle, this means cold air is taken from the rear and hot air is expelled from the front. The choice of fans and airflow will depend on your data center environment and the location of your hot or cold aisle. In a chassis, fans can be integrated to the fabric card or can be ordered as fan-only modules. So let's talk a bit about line cards. Arista chassis switches usually come with 10 gig line cards, 25 gig line cards. You could also order 40 gig, 100 gig, or even 400 gig line cards. The first line card you see here is an example of a 40 gig line card. You can see it has 32 QSFP um, 40 gig interfaces. Um, the second line card, actually for the first one, you can actually break that out to 128 10 gig interfaces if you have the right breakout cable. The second line card is an example of um, a 10 gig line card. Here you have 64 10 gig interface, SFP interfaces and then you have four QSFP 40 gig uplink interfaces. The third line card is an example of uh, copper uh, line card. So here you have 64 um, copper interfaces, 10 gig copper interfaces, and you have four um, 40 gig um, QSFP uplinks. And then the fourth line card is an example of a 32 port 100 gig line card. In this slide, you also have an example of a 25 gig um, 48 port line card with 400 gig QSFP uplinks. And then finally, you have two different line cards. Remember, in the 400 gig standard, you either have QSFP DD um, form factor interfaces or you have OSFP. Um, um, interfaces. So you either with 40 gig, you either have one of the two. And here is an example of a line card that supports both standards. Um, this 400 gig line card has 24 400 gig either OSFP or QSFP DD interfaces. Let's talk about a bit more about SFPs and cabling. Um, for these different line card speeds that we talked about. So for 10 gig interfaces, your SFP options are pretty straightforward. You could use your LR optics, you could use SR SFPs, or you could have the 10 GT SFPs. For cabling, you could use a single mode fiber, you could use a multi-mode OM3 or OM4, you could use CAT6 cables, or you could use the DAC cables. For 25 gig, you could have the 25 gig SR optics or the 25 gig LR optics, for example. Um, it's also important to note that the 10 gig and 25 gig, in terms of um, the form factor, they look pretty identical. And you'll see that in the next slide, in terms of the, how the SFPs actually look. They look very, very similar. In terms of cabling, you can either use the single mode duplex fiber, multi mode OM3 or OM4 fiber, or you could use the DAC cables. For 40 gig, the naming is slightly different. You could have the QSFP 40 gig SR4 optic, QSFP 40 gig LR4. Another one I omitted here is the QSFP 40 gig universal optics. You can also have the LRL4s or the PLR4s. Um, and then in terms of cabling, you could use MTP to LC breakout cables or the QSFP to four twin axe copper um, breakout cable, or you could have the QSFP to QSFP 40 gig AOC, which means active optical cable. So it's one of those cables that has um, the actual SFP and the uh, fiber optical cable welded together. So you buy the SFP and the cables as a single um, item. And then for the 100 gig interfaces, you can either go with the 100 gig SR4s or the 100 gig LR4s or the 100 gig ELR4s, for example. You could use the QSFP to QSFP active optical cables or the DACs, which are um, direct attached copper cables. Um, or you could use the MTP to LC uh, breakout cables to break out 100 gig to um, 425 gigs, for example. 
you also have the 400 gig speed and then you have different optics like i mentioned earlier with 400 gig you either get the osfp optics which means octal sfp or you get the qsfp dd optics so you could also um use active optical cables um you could also use uh, breakout cables as well to break out the 400 gigs to um, 5 or 8, 8 50 gig, inter 8 50 gig um, interfaces. So on the left hand side, this is an example of what an SFP looks like. You could have this kind of SFP for the 10 gig, 25 gig, 40 gig, um, 100 gig with these LC connectors. Um, on the right hand side, it's a slightly different form factor. These are QSFP plus connectors. And this is what, for example, a 40 gig PLR4 optic would look like, or a 100 gig PSM4 optic would look like. And um, in the bottom part of the diagram, we have an example of an MTP to MTP cable. So you could have two switches, for example, with um, 40 gig PLR4 optics inside um, the interfaces, and then you could use MTP cable on both sides to connect both switches, or you could have PLR4 optic on one end and use the MTP to LC breakout. So you put the MTP end into the PLR4 optic, and then the LC end of the breakout cable, you could connect it to a 10 gig optic, like you can see on the top left hand side of this slide. Let's talk about the fabric. So the fabric is the, the component inside of a chassis that is responsible for connecting the line cards together. Traffic is distributed within the fabric using either flow-based or cell-based hashing. The fabric usually come as fabric only or with a fan integrated. So here you can see an example of a fabric that has a uh, fan integrated. You can see the color of the fans is actually, the color of the handles of the fans are red. So that means that hot air is being expelled on the rear and then the cold air is taken from the front. So this is a front to rear airflow. So let's talk about supervisor engine. This is basically um, the hardware component that runs the control plane for the switch. So by control plane, it runs the, I mean, it runs the operating system. It runs the different routing protocols, um, spanning tree protocols, and you know, different protocols that you have um, running on your switch. It usually comes in a redundant pair when you order them. So finally, let's look at other hardware components. Um, the first one of them is USB. You can use the USB ports on the switch for a recovery. So um, let's say, for example, you don't have any access to the switch anymore. You, the switch gets corrupted and you're no longer able to manage that switch. You can carry out a full recovery um, of the switch with the USB port. You need to just make sure you have a USB, USB flash drive that is formatted as ms DOS or FAT. Um, and then you create three files. The first is a full recover file. The second is, which is going to be empty. And then the second is the boot config file. And then the third is, you need to have the image as well, the EOS image. And you name it as full recover boot hyphen config. And then you also name the image as EOS.SWI. So you plug in the USB to the USB port and reload the switch. When the switch reloads, it erases the flash content and copies the content of the USB to the flash. You could also use the USB as a way to backup switch configuration as well. The manage management port on the switch is responsible for out-of-band management of the device. It does not route traffic, so you cannot receive traffic on Ethernet 1 interface and route it through the management interface, for example. So any traffic destined, so it's specifically designed for traffic, uh, management traffic destined to the device or from the device. Thank you very much for listening. In the next video, we'll cover Arista EOS overview. We'll talk about EOS architecture. 
and then we'll also share some unique features of the Arista EOS operating system. Thank you very much.